What's going on, Giants fans? We are less than 100 subscribers away from getting to 7,000. So if this is your first time coming across a Giants Now video, go hit that big red button for Giants coverage all year long. Free daily videos around the latest Giants news and rumors. And we're going to be going live for the NFL draft. So join the family and go down right now and hit that big red button. You are watching New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. And today's show, we're going to touch on Kenny Galladay. I thought Brian Dable had some pretty interesting things to say about Kenny Galladay and potentially having a breakout year in 2022. And the rumor, kind of news-ish rumor, that the Giants, they had dinner with Jalen Petrie, the safety DB nickel from Baylor before the Baylor Bears Pro Day today. So we're going to talk about it. Should the Giants draft a safety in round two at pick 36. Jabril Peppers, he signed a one-year, $2 million deal with the New England Patriots. The Giants, they cut Logan Ryan. So the only two safeties on the roster right now are Xavier McKinney, who I like a lot, who I think will be a longtime starter at the free safety spot, and Julian Love, who's really not a strong safety. He's more of a nickel that can kind of play safety. So they have a pressing need at the safety spot. spot excuse me. But Mike K., he put this out last night on Twitter and said, I'm told Baylor Bear DB Jalen Petrie had dinner with the Giants last night before Baylor's Pro Day today. He also met with the Eagles after the workout, but who cares about the Eagles? You can go down and type F Philly in the comments if you hate the Eagles right now. But let's take a look at what Jalen Petrie is as a player. In 2021, he was one of the best players in the Big 12. He was the Big, Big 12 2021 Defensive Player of the Year. 75 tackles, and no, that's not a typo. A safety nickel had 18 and a half tackles for loss, seven pass breakups, two interceptions, three and a half sacks, three forced fumbles, three fumble recoveries, and he was the 2021 Big 12 Player of the Year. He's 5'11", 198, but he plays like he's Camp Chancellor, like he's 6'3", 220. This is someone that is always around the football, and I really like him because he has some versatility to him. He's not really a single high safety, but he's kind of like a Tyron Matthew, in my opinion. He can play strong safety. He can come down in the box. He can play on the line of scrimmage. He can play a little bit in the slot, cover some tight ends and some slot receivers. He played really well at the Senior Bowl and answered some questions about him being able to be a coverage safety, and he played really well in that role, and he was great against the run. He had the most run stops in college football last year, and mo most of them coming behind the line of scrimmage. Him in a Don Wink Martindale system would be so fun. He would be that money backer type of player for Martindale where he could play in the slot. He can play in the strong safety spot. He can play in the box, and he can come off the edge on blitzes. This is a fearless and relentless tackler. Just because he's 5'11", 198, don't take that – you know, as a slight, this is someone that plays much bigger than, than he is, and he's an aggressive tackler consistently flicking that right stick up using the hit stick. But let me know, should the Giants draft Jalen Petrie with pick 36? I think it really matters what you do in round one. If you get a corner and you get a linebacker, a uh, lineman, excuse me, Sure, I think you can go that route. But if you get Kyle Hamilton, you clearly won't need him. If you come away with Kayvon Thibodeau and one of the top two tackles, I think you can lean that way. It's, an, it's a big need, and he's a really solid player that would fit that need. So go let me know in the comments section what you think of Jalen Petrie. Should they draft him? Type D for draft if you're like, no, it's 36. It's too early for a safety. We just took Xavier McKinney in the second round. That's fine. You can go down and type P for pass. Story number two on today's show. Is it time this year for Kenny Galladay to have a bounce back season? It was an ugly 2021 for Kenny Galladay for a lot of reasons. He played through a lot of injuries. Him and Daniel Jones really never had the connection that they needed to have. And Jason Garrett was Jason Garrett. We'll talk about that in a second. But I want to look at what Kenny Galladay did last year compared to the past three seasons. In 2021, he played in 14 games, but he played through injuries. And I think that was kind of the reason his production somewhat fell off on top of Jason Garrett. 37 grabs for just 521 yards, a 14.1 average yards per catch, which was lower than 2020 and 2019. And yeah, he had a goose egg touchdowns. In 2020, he played in just five games, 20 grabs for 338 yards and two touchdowns. But in 2019, the best season of his NFL career. He had a league high 11 touchdowns, 18.3 yards per catch, almost 1,200 yards on 60 
five grabs. That's the type of season I want to see Galladay have in 2022. It's time for Dable to put him in a position to succeed, which is something I think he will do. This is what Dable had to say about Kenny Galladay at the NFL owners meetings this past week. He said this, he's a big bodied guy that makes contested catches. So he's like all the other guys. I went back and watched the Detroit seasons and he had some good seasons. You try to do it as you try to do as much work as you can on these guys before they get there to see what they have been successful at and figure out a way to use them in things they they've excelled at. He went on to say, "You've got to see them do the things that you're going to ask them to do." In the offense, there's plays that we're going through right now. Heck, if those guys want to turn inside on this route, let's figure it out. When they get here and ask him, Dable will put Galladay in a position to succeed because that's what good coaches do. Yeah, you have your offense, but you need to adjust your offense for the type of players you have. And Kenny Galladay, if used right, can be a legit wide receiver one. Dable, he did the same exact thing. With Stephon Diggs, he went back and watched what made him successful in Minnesota. And he put him in those positions, those same positions that he succeeded at in Buffalo. And that's why Stephon Diggs has been one of the best receivers in the NFL since he became a Buffalo Bill. And I think he will do the same thing with Kenny Galladay this year. Send him on deep routes. He's a deep threat. He's not someone that's just a three-step slant guy, a bang eight post guy. He doesn't just run in breaking routes. This is someone that can stretch the field. Back in 2020, he had an eight. 15 yard per catch average. Send him on deep routes. Use him in the red zone. Throw him 50-50 balls. This is someone that's a good player. I mean, 2019, 18.3 yards per catch. The next year, 16.9 yards per catch. 11 touchdowns in 2019. That's the type of player the Giants gave that four-year, $72 million contract to. It's time to put him in position to succeed. But who's going to have more touchdowns in 2022? Both these guys on screen, as you know, combined for zero TDs. If you think Kadarius Tony, who I'm hoping has a breakout year and I still have a lot of trust in, if you think he's going to have more TDs, type KT, or if you think Galladay is going to bounce back, you can go down in the comments and type KG if you think he's going to have more touchdowns. I really do believe it. I think Kenny Galladay is going to have a bounce back year. Can he catch 70 balls? Can he go over 1,000 yards? Can he have six, seven touchdowns? That's what the Giants need. They need him to be a wide receiver one. Draw some attention from safeties. Be a problem when teams are game planning to play against you. Put him in a position to succeed, unlike Jason Garrett did last year. Jason Garrett, quite frankly, is a criminal for the lack of touches Galladay had in the red zone. This is a red zone monster type of receiver. Six foot four, a large catch radius, knows how to go in high point balls better than a lot of people in the NFL. He has really strong hands. Just because he's covered doesn't mean he's not open. This is a type of receiver that even though the DB's in his hip pocket, just throw him up, let him use the large catch radius. He has strong hands, and he can catch the body, the ball away from his body. He is a hands catcher, and you need to use him in that type of way. I just want to see a couple times. Throw him a 50-50 ball in the red zone. That's what Matt Stafford did in Detroit. Maybe Daniel Jones needs to go back and watch that tape and find ways to get Kenny Galladay, the football. I appreciate everyone that's watched today's show, and I'm asking a favor. Help us get to 7,000 subscribers. We're less than 100 away, and I think we can get there on today's video. So if you love the Giants and you want more Giants news and rumors, go hit that sub button because the Cleveland Browns report, they're trying to get to 7,000 subs away. My producer, Matthew Peavy, and we have a $1,000 bet on the line on who's going to get there first. So go down and hit that big red button.